All right, this is the Tuesday, June 27th meeting of the Hanson Board of Health. That is 402. <laughs> okay. 402, and uh, this meeting is being recorded. So let's. Um, do we want to start with the subject? Do you want to start? With, okay, yeah. You start with yeah, that we can do, and then we can go back to the end. We can, yeah, we can do that back. Yep. Oh, yeah. 63 Pratt Place. All right, 63 Pratt Place. Yeah. Be up first. Can I? Yeah. All right. We both of them would be. Yeah. yeah. Do, you want, do you want? you want to share one? Yeah. Rather than come full. Absolutely. Or we can do that. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Reach here. Okay. Do that. Can I get those? Oh, the oh. other packet. Oops. Which one you want? Oh, oh all, the all the goods. All the goods. Just hand them all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Give them this too. I like them to see this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like oh. that sheet too. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I like to get these. Okay. All right. All right. Ready when everyone else is. So let me point out the variances that are on the plan, as uh, written at the lower left-hand corner of the plan. Uh, the variance that they're asking for. Uh, yep, so for the record, I'm Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering Group, uh, representing the property owner on this, this uh, septic repair on an existing system. Um, we're looking for a couple things with this. Um, first is a reduction from the required four feet to three feet between the bottom of this leaching system and the high groundwater. Secondly, the use of a grain size distribution analysis instead of a PERC test. Uh, the reasoning for that, well, the reasoning for both of them are that we encountered high groundwater on site, um, so we were not able to do the standard PERC test procedure. Um, additionally, because of the high groundwater, we're looking at a mounded system. Um, with the variance, we're proposing to come up about five feet above existing grade. That would be six feet without the variance. Um, so it's going to help a little bit cosmetically um, save, you know, 1500 bucks, $2,000 or whatever, and the extra fill material will also help um, or minimize any surface water running back towards the house, which is always a concern. Um, we do have the wetlands out in the back, so we're kind of balancing the leaching in the tanks between the existing house and the wetlands. Um, so that's pretty much it. This is going to be a pump system to a pipe and stone leaching field. We meet all of the required setbacks to the lot line, to the buildings. So just to recap, it's a four to three foot reduction beneath the system and the use of a sieve analysis instead of a PERC test. Is that one foot separation going to matter much? I mean, we all, you know, everybody's concerned the TMDLs and stuff and, you know, nitrogen loading and, you know, you got high groundwater, yet you want to get closer to the groundwater too, so. Yeah, it is going to get closer to the groundwater. Um, let's see what we have for, uh, let's spin this quick. Um, so it is a it is a loamy sand which you know gives you a little bit longer treatment time than if it were you know a nice clean sand the, the water just goes straight through it which requires an extra foot of separation um, so this is pretty standard procedure um, you know a lot of the old stuff was designed right in the groundwater or at it um, giving that three foot separation you know gives the the effluent, if you want the fancy word, it gives it time to kind of clean through the soil before it enters the groundwater. Um, so four feet is the standard, but we do commonly, you know, receive the allowance to go down to three feet with it. So now, just see it in more because your next plan is the same thing, no reduction of groundwater. So, so shedding off towards uh, the back of the lot. You want to call it? Looking at the elevations here. 
Yeah, so we go from an uh, existing elevation of 39 to a proposed elevation of 43. <clears throat> so it'll be uh, about a four foot slope. So from about here to you know that wall would be a rough idea. And then it'd be you know an extra foot without the variance. Um, we're not as concerned with the slope off the back as we are the slope back towards the house and the yeah. patio. So if we had more room or the wetlands weren't there, um, we would generally push this further away from the house. We wouldn't really need the reduction, mm -hmm. but in this case, you know, it's no place to go. It's right. warranted. Okay. Any questions? No, I don't have any more. I, I see no other problems. It's just that you know the reduction of groundwater, but the system is kind of trapped there, I guess. Yeah. And it is a it's a slightly oversized um, leaching field, which helps from a treatment perspective yeah. too. Um, you know, we're required 330 gallons per day for this size home. We provided a system that'll accommodate just under 400. Mm -hmm. So. And you have a copy of this, right? Yeah, that's just the original comments. That's the comments that's from the, um, conservation. Yeah, from yeah. Frank. So these should all be reflected on this plan. Yeah. This okay. was revised 620. I believe you have the same plan. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I wanted to make sure that was addressed. The well. Yep. All right. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to move this out of my way to make a motion that we approve the plans for 63 Pratt Place with the two uh, local upgrades that were requested um, with pending conservation. Pending conservation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. There you go. Next. Thank you. It's 66 High Street. Yep, 66 High Street. So okay with sharing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what I like is they do a letter. A nice letter with theirs. Yep. Answers all those questions. I like these letters too. <laughs> so they request an uh, upper left hand corner of the plan with we'll upgrade and pool request. Yeah. It's basically the same thing. Uh, it's reduction of the groundwater and then you had um uh, uh, Setback and foundation wall to size variance and reduction from 20 feet to 15 feet. Uh, what is that actually for? All right, so <clears throat> this one's uh, a little more of a difficult from an engineering perspective. Um, overview of the site we have wetlands kind of all around. Um, we did test pits in the backyard, we did a test hole out in the front, which is unsuitable. Um, we did a sieve analysis instead of a perk test on this, came back with very poor results. So poor, you know, slow draining soils resulting in a pretty gigantic leaching field, unfortunately, um, bigger than the house. Um, so with this one, we're kind of balancing it between, this is the 50 foot buffer right here. So we're 51 feet off of the wetland, which is about as tight as we can go. Um, this is a pressure distribution system, which is required with such a slow perk rate. Um, it helps to evenly distribute the flow amongst the whole field. Um, 
So with this one, um, we did have relatively high groundwater. Um, so I'll just kind of run through the variances that we're requesting quick and explain them. Okay. Um, as with the last one, we're seeking a four to three foot reduction between the bottom of the system and the high groundwater. Um, that you see right here. So <clears throat> that's going to help us, again, minimize surface water impacts going back towards the house. Um, it's coming up about two feet above existing grade in the back of the house, and it will be sloping back towards the house. Um, it's not an ideal situation, but it's, it's just what we're left with. Uh, we're out of room. Um, so the four to three foot reduction. Also, based on the existing plumbing coming out of the house, um, the tank inverts are required to be 12 inches above the groundwater where the pipes enter and exit the tank. Uh, due to the existing plumbing, um, we're only able to provide a one inch separation, so it is still above groundwater, but it's definitely getting close to it. Um, with that, we propose uh, monolithic being a one piece septic tank with no seams, so the water can't get in. And they're also seal coated with like a black tar. Um, basically, we're just trying to waterproof everything as tight as we can. So that's number two. Number three is a reduction from the required 20 feet to 15 feet from the house to the leaching field. Again, that's just because we're out of space. Um, we maintain the 50 feet um, and we maintain you know, greater than 10 feet as required by Title V, um, but it does push us a little close in this corner. Typically when we do this, um, we provide a, <clears throat> a rubber liner around the system. In this case, it's wrapping around most of the system. We have a detail for that. You can see it right here. So that's basically just a rubber barrier to prevent any uh, anything from the field from going back towards the house. And lastly, a um, sieve analysis instead of a perk test due to saturated soils. Um, we could not perform the perk test. So we took the samples, sent them to the lab, come up with an equivalent perk rate, and that's what we use for the design. So this is definitely uh, a tricky one, but yeah. this is kind of the, the best we can come up with. Um, really no way to make it work without these requests. So, and um, you know, this is a very, Kind of advanced design with the pressure distribution system. It's it's gonna you know give us the best shot at a, a long life of the system. Um, typically, the fields are you know, what we call end loaded. They come out of a distribution box. And they kind of just dump into it. A lot of times, those will fail and never even see the end of the field. With this, um, there's pipes running all the way through that kind of equally spray. So. I mean, it's, it's a good design. It's just a really tough site. I don't know if there's any other questions on this one. No. Any questions? No. Is the homeowner aware of the close distancing of all this? Is he aware of all this stuff as far as the design goes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is a tough one. The house is here at the bins of a lot. It yeah. just dropped way off at the end here, so. Yeah, yeah the... Uh, even with the variances, the, the preliminary estimates to do the construction are pretty steep. You know, they're they're looking at close to, you know, eighty, <gasps> ninety thousand for the system. Yeah. So um, So they're aware. <laughs> they're aware. They're, well, they're aware. It's yeah, unfortunately it's you know nature gave us on the site, so one of the nastier ones, but this is the best we come up with. Well, because if you didn't do that and you didn't put in a system that pushed it back this way, in three years they'd be coming back, fix the whole system all over again. Yeah, potentially. Three, five. Potentially, you know, it's, I mean, this, the existing leaching here, I mean, not to right here. kind of downplay the, the scope of the work, but the old system, you know, lasted for so long, it's, you know, it maybe from a functional standpoint, this could be smaller, but 
the design regulations of Title V, you know, this is the minimum what they design have to have. we can use. So it's definitely going to work, but unfortunately, it's just gigantic. Anything else for you? Gil and yep. Horsley? I'm all set. I'm all set there, son. Okay. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the um, plans for 66 High Street with the um, parcel that they get. Pending conservation approval. Yeah, I think that's in the fifth. Yeah. July 5th. So both of these are on there. Okay. Great. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. And aye. I'm an aye. I got for you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We keep in it. This is in here. Yeah. 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 She's going to go through it anyway. I should have brought my car or whatever. There you go. All Thank you. All right. So, shall we do Camp Kiwani catering and event? Sure. So we have Dory and Renee here from representing from Camp Kalani. Um, so I am assuming you're on the agenda because we've had, I know we've talked here a lot about the process of getting caterers permitted at the camp in time and as efficiently as possible. And I think we've tried to sort out the and streamline the, the mechanisms for that. I'm hearing sort of smatterings from caterers that they would like it to be easier. So we thought it would be best mm -hmm. if we were all in the same room rather than sending emails back and forth, try to sort out how we can work more efficiently together. So um, any thoughts from, from your end on yeah, so what you encounter? What we do. On our end. That would be a great okay. place to start. Let's let's do that. So we'll start at the beginning. So we have somebody comes in, they're interested in having a wedding at Camp Kiwani. Mm -hmm. So we give them this, the wedding planning guide, which gives them, you know, tips on, you know, things that they need to do. We give them the live rental application and attach to it the catering registration form. And we also give them another form which has a list of um, punch points that they have to do, one of them being the catering information. Okay. So with full instructions in here about how to return the catering form to the Board of Health and to Camp Kiwani okay. within 45 days. Okay. So 60 days prior to an event, we contact the bride and groom and we say, your final deposit is due, you still don't have your you know, paperwork in, it's going to be you know, due in, 40, in 15 days, and, and we do that every month. And then we have, uh, Renee has a catering calendar that she came up with, and as soon as we get the catering information, it goes on the calendar, and Teresa has live access to that calendar. Okay. So I know sometimes if Teresa's looking for catering information and she doesn't have it, she'll call the caterer, we'll call the bride and the groom, say you need to get your paperwork in to the Board of Health, or you're not going to have a wedding. So that's pretty much how it works. Do you have? No, that's pretty, pretty accurate. The so on the, let me get that on the first paper you have. On right there. Oh, so catering. the catering registration form prior to all of this mm -hmm. didn't have. We don't. We never. I don't think I've ever gotten one of these back. The form has your address and our address. So yeah. Good point. We. I've never gotten one. This back is the form that you know that we changed. No, I was just going to say you guys must have changed that because I didn't put your address on it. Yeah, no, no we did it. Yeah, yeah, together. Remember, we talked about it and we yeah, said, yeah, I you can do it. I asked if it was okay to, mm -hmm. to take it. So just to try and get up in the loop prior, which has never happened. So I still end up emailing and whatnot. But that, that bullet point tells them also um, when they have to get stuff back to us. Um, we also give them that. Mm -hmm. And... So short of, of these, I'm definitely open to suggestions on how I can get these people to respond sooner. But I think the live access has helped, no? 
It has, but if you add something at the last minute, like mm -hmm. I, you guys had like a bereavement or something, yes. I still don't have paperwork for that. And I emailed, I saw it the day of, but I mm -hmm. saw it late in the afternoon. It had already happened. Were they over 75 people? No, know. but they were using a caterer. So that, I, I don't understand. So, okay, so. Any caterer that, <clears throat> any caterer that works up there, be it if there's five people or 300 people, if a caterer is working in town, the food code says they have to be permitted. Thank you. With yeah, the so Board of Health. Is right. that including them picking up the food and bringing it in? Because a lot of times, if they have, because my my understanding was if they have 75 or fewer people, <coughs> they can bring in their own food. So whether that's going to BJ's and picking up a food platter or going to Mama Mia's and picking up a tray, they're still bringing it on their own. Mm -hmm. So my understanding was they didn't have to notify the Board of Health of that. For any caterer that works. Right. But is they working, are they working in a catering capacity if they're picking food up? If the if the people that rented from you guys are picking it up, well, so you have to have somebody who's who's saying that. So I don't know, chicken is supposed to be kept at whatever temperature. Who is saying that the food that they're picking up it, from you know point A to point B, being you guys, mm -hmm. is staying at temperature and that everybody's not going to get sick? But under seventy five yeah. people, my understanding was that wasn't a concern. Well, it's always a concern. I mean, we don't right, want people to get sick. Right, but I don't. We we don't require catering under seventy five people. So no, right. But so if somebody's just bringing something in, right? Yeah, like pizzas. Right. Then that's fine. Yeah. But if they because they're taking on that responsibility. But if it's a right. caterer that's doing cooking the food, right. It, but that's uh, I'm right. understanding. She's that's what she's agent. trying to say. Please. If yeah. I if I ask if I ask Mama Mia to to make me a tray for seventy four people. Mm -hmm. And I, I bring it up. Hold on, let me finish. Uh -huh. And I I bring it to my event at. So Camp you're taking responsibility for it, right? That was the you're question. the renter. Question. So because uh, you're the renter. Because I'm the renter. Right. right. So right. so so just I just want to make sure we're really clear. Right. So let me finish my my thought from here. So the bereavement because I do imagine and I've thought of this as I've been kind of mulling this over in my head over the months. Um, Presumably, you have events that are scheduled under the 45-day. Right. So this bereavement came came up quickly, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and do we know if it was 75 or more? I don't people? know. All I know is there was a caterer listed on the event. So that was okay. So that was my that was my next kind of bullet point. Okay. So they may let us know. So fork in the road is going to do the food, but they have under 75 people. So my understanding was at this point that I needed to let you guys know that they are catering, but they're under 75 people, so they're actually going to get the food. Fork in the road is supplying that food. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, you know, okay, okay, okay. I thought fork in the road was catering at no, the event. No, they picked up the food. So maybe the, the language. The renter. The renter picked up the yeah. food. Yeah, if the renter is picking up the food, yeah. the renter is taking on the responsibility. Right. If the caterer is delivering the food, right. the caterer is taking on that responsibility. So my next segue. So sometimes, like fork in the road, because they're so often at the event, yeah. they'll bring the food to the event, drop it off, and leave. So my wording to people when they have an event or whatever going on if you have 75 or more people, mm -hmm. you need to have your event catered with the caterer on site for the with food service. Servers, right. right. That's great. I had so, somebody call me today about that. Right. That's what I tell them. It's 75 people or more, caterer on site for the entire food service. Mm -hmm. So, fork in the road, like, for instance, they come there they all, they all the time. time. Right. So, sometimes, as a courtesy, they'll drop food off and, and leave. If they're having 75 or fewer people, you know, Ellie will say, hey, I'll drop off the trays. And to my understanding, it was... That was okay because the renter was taking on responsibility because they've left 75 people. So it gets down to that nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. very nitty gritty. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, my thing is liability. Yeah. So right. if somebody gets sick, right, mm -hmm. it's a town-owned facility. So maybe you know what's going to happen. They're going to end up coming after the town. Yeah. So, so maybe, that's my main concern. Maybe we say that you go pick it up. Don't have them, you know, they're trying to, folks are trying to do a favor, say, I'm going to drop it off. And I think the answer is no, the rent will get it Well, because how, like, if, so I always just think chicken, because chicken makes people sick. If they're dropping it off, is it just being sat, is it just in the kitchen? Like, how do you know that it's being kept at temp? So when it's right. heated up, or somebody's about to eat it, they're not going to get sick. Right. That's the main thing. But you don't want people to get sick because they're going to come right. back to the town. Right. And, and, then, and then technically, the, the fork in the road dropped it off. Right. But maybe we just have the 
you know, they'll go out and say well, something. Well, drop off. Oh, it's time, it's temperature, drop control, off. and custody. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think so that's the answer the right there. The communication is with, like, like the caterer. Yes, it has to be. Yeah. The client has to pick it up. Pick it up. It's it's just who, who yeah. is responsible? If they drop it off, they're responsible. If the, if the customer picks it up. Right, they're, they're taking on that responsibility. responsibility. They pick up pizzas and bring it back, and they let their pizza sit out for more than four hours. Now that we're... Right. Sick. right, so you know. Uh, <laughs> they, <didn't laughs> know. Four hours, yeah. they would, they could get sick. Right, but it's on them. Right, and, and they, it's they brought it, and then we we trace it back. It's on them. Right. But if Fork in the Road dropped it off, somebody got sick. Oh, well, more than four hours. We trace it back. Oh, Fork in the Road dropped, dropped it off. So, so they're going to be liable too, and that's right. nobody wants that. So, nobody wants that. So maybe tackle this from two two angles. One, letting the caterers know that under seventy five people. They should not be dropping off, and make sure that yeah, because I mean that's a huge liability. And, yeah. and make sure that the folks know that they can't ask that of pick it the up. caterer. They have to pick it up. They have to pick it up. Yeah. And it sounds like clarification in the calendar on a like a shared language that it sounds like Renee and Teresa need to to be on the same page about would be good. So yeah, you shouldn't accept food. You as the camp should not accept food from fork in the road when the people that are running the event aren't there. It's not that us that it accepts it, it's the food. client. So this is a food dropped off for the client even gets there? This is this is no, not gonna go there. Never? Never. So the camp itself should not accept the food. It should no. be always the client that accepts it, the food. It would right. always be the client, yeah. Right. Never the camp. It's never anybody right. from the camp. Okay. It's always if the client's not on site then the food can't be dropped off. Okay. That's not yeah. You don't want to be responsible for yeah. it. Right. Yeah. right. You don't know what happens no. in the meantime. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think that's the big thing. No dropping off of food. If it's that, the customer can pick it. Yeah. Come pick it up. So throw that in my bullet point. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there anything needed for those under 45 day events? Like, let's just say there's another bereavement and it's, you know, it's for. Thursday yeah. or Friday evening. Is there? Is it better to have more direct communication? Yeah, just email me just that, so I can, like, hop on it. Because by the time I saw it on Wednesday, it had already happened. And I was like, well, and I emailed uh, Fork in the Road, and I still don't have anything back. I've sent them an email twice. I still yeah. don't have anything back. I don't know about Fork in the Road. Yeah, I think, well, was that's, that was the caterer. Who 75. Yeah, I don't know. Why yeah, that, I, don't have, I don't have access to how many people are going nine times out of ten. Sometimes if I have the menu, it'll say how many people it's for, but nine times yeah. out of ten, I have no idea how many people it is. So on the, on the spreadsheet, if it's 75 or fewer, I put under yes, 75. Yes, 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 so, right. um, you know that they're not required to have a caterer, which I can keep doing. No, that's fine. That but if there's a caterer listed and it's under 75, I wouldn't know that. Right. Do you know what which, I mean? Which, mm -hmm. honestly, I didn't think... Which really is fine. It, it's yeah, fine. That's fine. Because yeah. <laughs> if they have a caterer, they have a caterer. Right. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter how many people. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it does, because if they're not staying on site, then it makes a difference. Right. If it's under 75 and they have a caterer. But now they're not going to be dropping off. Right. So, yeah, that's it'll be guess. a moot point. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So much easier than emails. It really oh, is. Yeah. It gets, everything gets lost yeah, in, exactly. in translation. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other... Questions, thoughts, or comments from the camps and around this? Not that I'm aware of. I know our relationship with the caterers is always good. Yeah, I don't know. They mentioned they do mention some of the red tape associated with you know menus and all that, and I don't know anything about all of that. Yeah, but that's um, that's the law. Yeah, yeah I, I mean we didn't make that up. That, that's so. the law. All that stuff's required because yeah. and the menu is because if somebody gets sick, you have to know what they served in order to trace it back. So if the state were to step in, the state's going to say, what did they serve? Oh, right. here we, here's the menu. Right. And yeah. if we don't have that, they're going to be like, oh, why don't you have that? Right. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, that, that is, that's why we asked for it. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> and the, uh, and, we're not that, didn't they, in the training? In the training. And yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have to be able to trace stuff back. Yeah. yeah. And so if, like, certain caterers cater a lot up there. All they have to do is submit everything once, I know. Right. and they have submit everything once, and assuming the expiration date is, you know, covers all of the events, the only other thing they have to submit is the application in the menu. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because yeah. I already have their serif safe and their allergen, and that's still active. Yeah, they're already been paid. Yeah, they, they yeah. nine times out of ten, they pay a hundred dollars right. for the season if they if they know they're going to be up there. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's super easy. It's not. Mm. It's not difficult. No. An application in a menu is super easy to do, and yeah. everything else should be posted in their place of business, anyways. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the insurance, I suppose. Yeah, I think you know I've gone through this with Teresa because I always have an interest in being more efficient if we can be and be within the legal codes. Um, but I don't know that there is any way to make there be any less red tape and be incomplete. <laughs> I always pull them back. I don't know anything about all of that. That's yeah. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I, on, on, I mean, I think it, it's here, what we need. Yeah, I mean, I think what what Teresa was just saying was a conversation that Teresa and I had had earlier in the week about, you know, do they need to submit all of this every time, like fork in the road to do this for every event? No. The cater would be, would be extremely tedious because yeah. they're there so much, but it, it's, it sounds like that is as streamlined as yeah. we mm -hmm. can get. Yeah, Fork in the Road generally does submit everything, but they're not required to. Maybe. Oh, maybe we need to tell them that then, so that. that they don't it's feel like... It's, it's written in the email that I sent them. Okay. Well, Please yeah. submit the application. But the email. person who's reading the email may not be the person preparing the paperwork? Possibly. No. no. Communication. Maybe. Okay. Don't know. Go maybe ahead, we should add on our list, too, to when they send the application to the Board of Health, including the menu. We should put that on our paperwork. We don't have that now. Um, yeah, but it's written on it's written on the application. Menu of food being served at events. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a, literally the list, and all they have to right. do is. Have <laughs> <place>. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. no, no. <laughs> and everything is all of those. Um, like the serve safe and allergen, that's required to be posted in their they restaurant. Right. Order so everything on the yeah. Yeah. And they should have a folder yeah. that they just they cater all all the time. I'm sure most mm -hmm. of these places. Yes. Yeah. So they yeah. should have like a pile that they just photocopies. They just hand out because they're doing it all the time. Right. Okay. I know how easy the menu. I don't know how much easy. I mean, getting the getting the uh, people that are having the event to get us the catering information. It's tedious. <laughs> if anyone has suggestions how it can be easier done, I mean, short of emailing every week, that type of thing. I mean, I think the spreadsheet has helped tremendously. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, I work on the email. How yeah, you're like your own not dot com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where you're, you know, you are right. helping keep people on task for what needs to be done by right. the certain time. Right. A lot of people time. are waiting until the last. I want all my response back before I order all my food before I pay for all this stuff. Yeah, yeah they do it last kind of minute. Yeah. 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 I'll send you an email tomorrow because there's a couple for next month that I don't have anything for. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything back yet, but you can. Yeah. yeah. I just looked at it quick this morning. Yeah, emails are out. They went out last week for okay. the ones that are coming on 45 days, so, but yeah. This is what it looks like really on the yellow, spreadsheet. Yeah. Excellent. I don't know if you want to see What it. does the yellow mean? It means I haven't gotten information from it yet. Yes. I mean, it doesn't emails really are print out. out well on paper, but Teresa can see it on the screen. It means emails are out. I just haven't gotten a response yet. Once I get a response, I'll take the yellow off. And these people are planning these events a year out. Exactly. Yes. Sometimes right. too. So they don't get to the caterer till you know. There's a lot of weddings. Falls off. Falls off. Mm -hmm. I think we have 26 weddings this season. Yeah. Or 23. Somewhere That's great. Eight. Okay. So there might be a shotgun one coming up. So. <laughs> a surprise <laughs> one. Someone has asked about August. Yeah. Oh. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Slide it in. All right. Well, this is very. It's <coughs> very helpful, hopefully, for all of us, so we don't have to keep bothering each other mm -hmm. on process and procedure. And I, I can't think of any other way for you to tell people how important it is mm -hmm. to get the catering, other than saying, if you don't get it in by this You're not going to have food. You're not going to have food. Yeah, we have to say, point. you won't. Oh, I've told people that before. I'm there. I've yeah, told people. Our applications, I'm like, look, you're not going to have a bottle. That's another struggle we have, too, chasing down the bar applications. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, and they'll have to bring their own water yeah. and soda. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't think that's, we can't fix that. Now, do we want, if anybody comes up with anything, I'm open to it. Hmm. Do you want these back? You can keep them. It's a good idea for us to have yeah, an yeah. idea of what the file. 
Teresa, can I give these to you so we can develop a um, Kiwani catering style? Yes, yes. <laughs> that was, we want to go back and look at it. Sure. Look at that. That would be good. And maybe Kevin will want to take a peek too. You know. So you're going to reiterate to the renter 45 days. Okay. And, and the, the thing I like is that we give them a 60 day notice because we need the, our balance due in 60 days. Right. So you need to send in your balance. And you need to send, it's another opportunity to say you need to get your catering information. Yeah. So right, right. right. We, now. Need, we need both to hold your spot. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. The money and the caterers. And, and it's true, we do. Yeah. You kind of do. Yeah. And no, right. no drop off of food from the caterers. Yes. Correct, right? No right. drop off. I just want to make sure this yeah, is accurate. Yeah, under 75. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That way we don't have any liability. Right. No cost No. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> you guys are paying attention. <laughs> it was a it was a good it was an excellent class. Mm -hmm. I have to say it was from seven no it wasn't it was eight a.m. to two p.m. We only took three ten minute breaks no lunch. Where did you go? They came to us. Yeah, that's great. If you have five people, we have five people take it. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll come to you. And the, and the instructor was awesome. She yeah, she, she was great. The yeah. who's the instructor? If, uh, her name was Rachel. But it was HR, hotel and restaurant, serve safe managers. Mm -hmm. I would use, I was telling to Teresa today, I would definitely recommend them. They were excellent. The only, she knew everything. She knew, oh, yeah. The whole book. Oh, she knew, she was amazing. Yeah. She, and, and wasn't boring every, after every chapter, you know, and we got the book. She'd do a recap, and we were all engaged. <coughs> all the, audiences. the only bummer was when we took the test, at least 25% of it didn't apply. So it doesn't. It yeah. didn't apply to what you taught tricky. us. It was very yeah. tricky. Yeah. Very tricky. So which stinks. It which stinks because I thought I was gonna ace it and I, I didn't, but I passed, so I'm good with it. Yeah. But um yeah, the the test was disappointing and it was ninety questions. But um the test was a little bit disappointing. And did you have if you have chicken and you have fish yeah. and you put this oh. on this shelf and what goes on that shelf? Oh, without a doubt. The yeah. first, yeah, exactly. I can tell you right the five shelves, where they are, the, the, the temperature degrees. Yeah. 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 But, like, that wasn't on the test. That was the stuff that they stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you both Thank so you much so for coming time. out. This Thank was you. Nice yeah, meeting you. Nice meeting for me, anyway. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. Well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Wonderful. Back to it. Back to it. Any other questions, always come back. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Can, okay. Thank, thank you so you much. Out. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> so we have minutes. Let's approve the minutes from June 6, 2023. I will make a motion that we approve the minutes from the Board of Health meeting from June 6, 2023. I will second. All in favor? Aye. I'm an aye as well. Okay. So, on to old and unfinished business. We... Push the public health nurse yes. topic over to, to today. You had talked about some things on the job description that you thought we didn't need or wasn't sure. Nope. We, we had discussed many meetings ago the possibility of utilizing some of our public health nurse budget to perhaps share with Whitman. Um, their public health nurse and decide, you know, based on your conversation with that nurse, what we may or may not utilize here. But I think what okay. we expressed was like, we probably didn't need every service on the job description That's right what now. That's the we job gonna, description, we right. We're going to pare it down, but first we were going to get some data from the Whitman public health nurse, see what he or she does for, for that town, and then decide one, they would be willing to share some hours with us, and then two, what would we as a board decide we would like to use them for okay. in town. So, so I talked to her, but I didn't ask about her availability. Okay. At one point, there were two nurses, and now there's one. Okay. Um, but I actually had talked to her about Maven reports. She is willing to help us. Okay. Um, 
but I can call her back and ask about specifically if she has hours. What would we be looking at? Well, I think uh, three or four weeks. I think we 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 didn't get twenty for the month. I think we thought a few hours a week, and then uh, I'm curious. Did what does she do for women? Um, she would be, she does all the Maven reporting and then she does all the follow up, which that can ebb and flow. Right. Based on I, I what, imagine. what comes, yeah, what comes out of, um, what needs to be followed up on. So she would do all of that sort of case management if it's somebody that needs follow up. Okay. And that might require, you know, not that often, it might require a couple of hours of calling, checking in with the patient, making sure that the person is getting treated making sure that the physician's aware of it, um, that kind of, it really just would depend. And we don't have any major reports, so it's really hard to say what our needs are going to be. Um, she told me that the, that report is very easy to do. Are you kidding me? No. I, 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 mean, I went through every report. I am going to be to meeting out what somebody on Thursday. Um... And I can either get directions or I can give you the name of the person at the help desk that can tell you exactly how to do that. You tell them how to do it. Okay. Yeah. Because we really need to do this. So is that... We need, we need to do something. That, so is, that's number one priority. So is that all that the Whitman nurse does? And not, I shouldn't... I'm not oh, maybe no, no. to demoralize right. it. Right, right, right. I'm, right. No. I'm no. asking, is there anything else that he or she does? Do they do clinics at all over there? Not that I'm aware of. No, not I'd love many, for us to be able to Not do many do. A lot of clinics, I've talked about two or three different towns about what they do, the public health nurses. Yeah. Um, towns. And there are a couple that do the health clinics, but not a lot. They yeah. do the blood pressure clinics, is what yeah, you're asking yeah. about. Um, yeah. I just think that's, that would be a nice it would be service a nice to provide. We, and we used to do it at the senior center. Like blood pressure we clinics and right. different things like that that... So you know, people don't have to leave town for. So one of the top, I mean, I, I sort of went through and I checked off some things that I thought in the job description, not that we would change no, the job no, description, no, no. but if we were going to, going to specifically ask a public health nurse to provide This is what we want them to focus on. It seems like we would, the top two are important and fall under what we were just talking about, maybe. Yep. And, Blood pressure clinics. I think um, annual health and safety fair, which probably should have been part of like Hampton Day. Yeah, Hampton where Day. We have a, right. We right. did. Um, I was in contact. It wasn't a public health nurse, but I was in contact with um, Shaw's um, in the pharmacy at Shaw's, and we did a flu clinic care for employees. But um, but that was for employees. Yeah. That's not for the public. No, but, but maybe we could do one for the public. Question, not. At a health fair, you would be giving people information. You might be like, this time of year, we should have done something about ticks. ticks. We should have done something about ticks. I did look up for tick cards to order tick cards. They're all out. But I put I put um, a thing so that when they come back into stock, I'll get an email. I mean, I, right. I would even say it would be helpful to have, at the beginning of each season, we could have the nurse to, to our meeting so that we could talk about this very thing. Mm -hmm. What do they suggest? We... Put a blast out about on our web new web page that will be coming up Im imminently. Um, so I, oh, right. I think there are, I'll and I think that we have a clearinghouse that we can get free information from. Yeah, that's the ones with the tick cards. But at that we would have readily accessible out here for people. So even before the season starts, we could start in February saying, you know, tick season never ended. This is what you then once you start going outside, this is what you're gonna it do. Never ends. It never ends. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, so and then the third one I checked off, and this is a topic that I'll talk a little bit more about under the chairman's update, but mm -hmm. it's helping with camp issues, um, uh, overseeing like camp inspections. Day camps in the summer. That's usually the health agency. I don't know. It's, it's, it's actually on, the on public, site. It's actually on the public health uh -huh. nurse, yes. um, and in other towns, the public health nurse is actually the they one who makes sure that the camps are in compliance with 
all of the regulations and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about that. That really needs to be a separate agenda item for next meeting, but I'll touch on my concerns under the chairman's update. I did the camp master study. We're only crazy. The, we very have first thing, no. <laughs> the very first thing I did when I came out of nursing school was Ooh, spend the number being one. summer being a camp master. So, yes, those are the, the highest priorities right now. Okay. And I'm guessing we'd probably have to post for the position? We do. So, okay. Um, but you need to have a job description to go with it. So if you want to change well, no, the job description. No, I think that she, she no? wasn't. I don't no. want to change anything. She okay. was just highlighting the no, things, I just want the to things make sure. that we need to focus yeah. on initially. Yeah. I want to make sure, however, that we have a full board when we do this. Before we vote on this and whatnot. I'd rather put this on our next meeting and okay. hope Kevin's here so that we can. Yep. Just, Everybody had an opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to make sure. We're, but I, I agree. I think we need to do something. And we should be right. Okay. Any other thoughts on this? No, my only other thing is at some point when we get into May, that we need to go back with some statements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minimum. Does anybody know the date of the next meeting? July, I'm not lying. August 8th? Uh, it's the 11th. No, July. July 11th. Thank you. We probably also need to look at the salary. I imagine this is old. It posted is. Posted in 2020, but that's still three years ago, so we'll have to look at that. We'll have to look at how much we have in that line. So we'll have to determine. Let's put this topic on every agenda that's moving forward. <laughs> the next three. <laughs> I imagine it's going to take a little bit of time to flush out anyway. Right. Okay. Great. Um, ongoing project updates. Um, so, anything from emergency planning? Um, no, MRC had the dinner, I think, that you couldn't come to. No, but I did meet with the chief. Oh, yes. So, um, I'll, I'll be getting up to speed with the, um, crisis response and whatnot. I, so, um, it was nice because he came, um, Charlie came, and the new chief in Duxbury, who has worked with the MRC for a million years, came as well. And the two of them talk all the time. So I think it would be a really good collaboration in terms of training. Um, I'm going to meet with the chief sometime after July the 4th and talk about how we're going to start trying to recruit volunteers yeah. for the MRC. The MRC doesn't have meetings in July and August, and so in September we'd be able to bring people in and start getting them in the system um, where they right. can have a quarry, we make them part of mass response. But it was really good to connect yeah. the chief directly to the people at MRC. And there right. are a few people from Hanson that have been there for a long, long time volunteering. Good. Yeah, so I think that will move forward. Because he was very enthusiastic about it. He had actually come a couple of years ago and done a presentation. Um, on a recovery that he worked on in the area that flooded down South Tennessee or quite a while ago. He brought there was an MRC show. meeting there? There was an MRC okay. meeting. Want to make sure. And that. Robbie came. Robbie and Charlie. And Charlie came to this meeting, yeah. Okay. I had pictures. I couldn't figure out how to post them. <laughs> um, but he had come three or four years ago and did a complete presentation on his part of the recovery operation that they did when they went, the recovery team from Massachusetts went down, mm -hmm. and he was part of it, because he's very interested in that. Great. Yep. Excellent. And I have um, I have not had a chance to look it over yet, because it's 75 pages, but um, the chief sent me the uh, critical response um, manual for the town of Hanson. Oh. So, I don't know. Okay. I'm happy to share it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Critical response manual. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just want to make sure I have the right title. Um, Did you send that there, Brian? Yeah. You know, I've never heard of that. Uh, comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. Yeah. Okay. Let's make the title. That ti That is the title. That's the title. All right. Um, I don't have any transfer station updates. Um, we are holding on our next committee meeting because we're waiting for 
Todd Kep from DEP to, to get us back. He's been in touch with Teresa and I on some numbers, but he's going to get us back some projections. Solid. Okay. Um, but I'd rather have all that data before the Transfer Station Committee meets again. Yep. So, so that, you can go over it. Yep, we'll go over that. And it will really inform two, two things. It will inform the board here on what we need to do for Transfer Station fees in 2024. Um, and it will also inform the town and the residents once we sort of put together what we compile for data about trash options for the town of Hanson. Mm -hmm. It will provide data to the residents as well. So, so that's that. Um, still no volunteers for the swap shop. It's really kind of stagnated. Why did you say you posted it originally? Because I never saw the original. On I know you wanted to put it on a, on a website, but... So it was on Facebook. Um, I, I, I did that through my, um, my personal Facebook page, which I'm not going to do any longer because oh, no. it becomes a mechanism for you have to unhealthy not, things. So yeah. I, I'm going to have Teresa, if I can. Can you send it to me? I'll send it to you. So anything now related to the swap shop, the transfer station, um, is going to go only through the Board of Health Facebook page or the Board of Health. Um, email uh, blast. Right. Okay. So I'll send that to Teresa. Yeah, um, I can send it. Um, sign up genius, it's called. Okay. I'll send that to you later, Teresa. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, anything you post, you can't allow comments. Yeah, it's, it's outgoing only. It just doesn't. It, it people, people have no, nothing better to do. So we'll just take a different approach and, and keep it. Keep it useful. So um, that's all I have. Do you um, actually? We'll wait. We'll wait for you, Gil, on the um, the agent report. The any other projects? Kevin's not here. No. Although we still covered Kiwani. Um, you have anything from Green Hanson? No. No. Uh, no. Okay. Um. So chairman's update, um, just this is more just an FYI. Um, the review process, the uh, performance review process that Gil underwent um, was somewhat of a, there were two of them done in the building. And the format that we utilized was somewhat of a pilot. And I think we certainly found some uh, drawbacks to the format right. as it was. Right. Um, I think the other folks, the select board, found similar drawbacks. So what is happening before any other performance appraisals go forward in the building, there's going to be a bit of a revamp and there's a, the HR company that's sort of advising. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa is going to be weighing in and there will be a better format moving forward. So I just wanted to let let everybody know. Thank you, Gil, for that. for for uh, being a bit of a pilot on that. I think it was still useful, but yeah. next year the form will look different. Um, so that is that. And then my only other chairman update is related to camps that happen in town. Um, I'm privy to some back and forth related to a, a baseball camp in town that some folks were complaining about not being in compliance. Uh, not complaining, that's the wrong word. We're, we're uh, concerned about it not being in compliance. So, um, Did you change this? Hold, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I, I easily lose my train of thought. Um, so I, I have some concerns that some of the camps, that any camps in town have not been in compliance with the with camp licensing. Um, having some experience in other towns, it is a fairly comprehensive process. It's one that can kind of be basically copied and pasted from year to year for the most part, like policies and procedures of the camps probably don't change much. But I think that we have probably not been enforcing it in part because it does fall in the under the public health nurse. Um, 
job description. Um, we have. Go ahead, Gil. We have the Rainbow Campus intense. That's from there. Yeah. Do that. that is intense. They have, you know, it's uh, what's this thing? Because they have everything. They have overnight. They have swimming. They have archery. They have. Uh, I don't think they have a fire range anymore. They have canoeing and kayaking. So that one gets set up pretty intense. It pretty much fills up that whole inspection report. Sure. When we do that. That's coming up in the next few weeks. We're doing that camp so. And that's the basic of the only full camp we actually have in town. So, the other so any is, uh, but any camp um, requires a. Um, oops, sorry. Requires a um, policy and procedure on all of these things. Does it say any number? So many participants, or just any camp? Let's go to the camp. It doesn't give us numbers, but I know the baseball camp has numbers, and it runs full days for a full week, right? Yeah, it runs like you know, so, two weeks at a time. But, so, <clears throat> for example, it needs a written camp medical policies and procedures. Makes sense. Um, and it it tends to be a binder that has to be kept at the camp on the premise. Yes. And it has to have all of these things because you're deal they're dealing with children. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't think this has been maybe been enforced ever for some of the camps that operate in town. I didn't even know there were camps that were operating in town. Well they go under instructional I mean this is right there. I mean these camps like the, that one particular one, we have no knowledge of, but uh, that one that you know did the complaint. Yep. Yeah, he's been in town. He's been uh, inspected several times. So I think I can two or three years maybe. Who? Uh, Rolling. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that I had knowledge of. The other ones I you know don't really. Um. And I believe that. Uh, to my knowledge, they were supposed to get a hold of Lisa to let her know what was going on because she had emailed him. And uh, I haven't heard any updated. I, I talked to her the other day. They still haven't got a hold of her yet. So. Well, it's not Lisa's. It falls under the Board of Health purpose. I understand that. But, you know, we had we had no knowledge of this until that. Yeah. And, well, then well, now we're, and that's a problem. That is a problem yeah. because we also are not going to be going out to you know, inspect fields to see if there are camps. Like that's just not something right. that makes right. any sense. But I suspect that there is some process before the Board of Health that like a permitting process that has to happen before us mm -hmm. that probably then needs to direct them to us to deal with this stuff. Yeah. What I would like to know, and I think we should put this on the next meeting agenda so that Kevin can be a part of this discussion as mm -hmm. well, is to your question, you know, what constitutes a camp? I mean, that camp right. constitutes a camp. It's all day for a week with many kids. Okay. And before you came on the board, there was a woman that wanted to do a camp up at Camp Kwan, a swim thing. Oh, yeah. And she went through the ringer having to do all these things. A lot. So why it, it, was she held to one standard and athletics is being held to another standard? I mean, I, I, she, she was a totally different <coughs> camp. It was still but a camp, I but she that, but. was required to do every single regulation um, because that's what the regulations are for camps. So why would that happen for her and not happen for any athletics camp? That's she wanted to get the license before she did some of the requirements. I think if you don't know that a camp is happening. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. So then, do, once we decide what we want, then we have to go to their boards and say, look, it cannot be camps unless you follow these guidelines. Right. Yeah. And make sure that we get the word out there so people won't say, and I didn't know. In fairness, I mean, this is this is yeah. comprehensive. Um, it's, it is absolutely comprehensive. I don't think any of it, however, is recreating the wheel. I think a lot of this is templated somewhere mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to help people get off the ground with it, but um, we need to figure out our our process for this. 
because we're now in the middle of summer with parents who I imagine have signed, signed up their up. kids for a camp that technically doesn't meet this criteria. No. The rainbow camp meets that criteria. Okay. Yeah. And that's the kind of camp that I would think when 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 yeah. Wani had a camp. Sure. They but I but I wouldn't have known about the athletic stuff. My kids in golf field. Yeah, I quite, and it even in here, in here it says sports camps. Okay. So, uh, I mean, if you think about it, kids are running around out in 90 degree heat, and you somebody, need to know if they've somebody had, goes down with heat stroke, or yep. um, do they have an eight year old doesn't have sunscreen on? Shots enough. up for the day. Yeah. So, range. This this really, in my opinion, has to be a priority for also for liability reasons. Um, so, let's. Put this one on for the next uh, yeah. meeting as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the meantime, Gil, could you grab information? I don't see it here. I looked through this as much as I could in the short time I had, but could you see if there are, is a definition from the state on camp? Yes, I've been looking for that. I thought we had that. It should be in the um school. It should be May I oh, uh, the the um I'm sorry, I'm the wrong thing. Uh, no, I have to look at the No, not this. The regular the recreational it's not stamp, but I think licensing process of course. No. It's no. Right there. Yeah, no, it's 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 written in the regulation. Yeah. Do you have a copy of the regulation? It's in the regulation. Didn't she? Did I give you a copy of that? Oh. No, I only have I'll, the... Yeah, the, it has like a glossary of terms. I'll send it to you. Okay. I got some more things can I'll print out. And, uh, can you I'll send that back. to all three of us, Teresa? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Gil. Anything else yeah, you have? I'll scan the CMR on the cameras, too. So. That's what I'm talking about. CMR? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did for the retail food program. All right, agents report. Gil, thank you for your your three reports. Okay. So uh, I'm sure everybody's read them. Uh, do you have any questions on the actual reports themselves? This is just a link. Yeah, I another one different from what you sent earlier, right? Hmm? The other one was on. This is food code. You want? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This says everything. So, uh, some of the things uh, to look at, uh, talking to Todd Cope on uh, the IDP funds. For, oh, yeah, great. For the trailer. Yeah. Uh, the, we can potentially purchase one. It would have to be, it would have to stay at the transfer station. It'd have to be lighted. The, the only thing that's uh, not sure as far as uh, registration and insurance to use IDP funds for that. Uh, the research that I look for, and also where to purchase one and the spe specifications. I was going to get a hold of Adam once I found out about the insurance and stuff and see what they actually want to do, what they're actually looking for. I mean, it could be, uh, we can go 16 foot or 18 foot or whatever, you know, potentially there is, you know, like we can use the funds, ITV funds to do it. So uh, that's a plus. So the so registration and insurance. The registration and insurance. I hadn't thought of that. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know that we could use that. So uh, <clears throat> and the specifications. I mean, I got to find a place that you know, you know, meets the state standard combines that sells these things. So just sell by you know, places that have you know, two or three different dishes, and a lot of them don't have the you know, don't qualify combine. So okay. And then uh, the uh, the transfer station attendant. We do have a person that is. Basically, on town payroll, is willing to work the hours that we would need him for. He you know, worked short notice for us. And he was talking the other day. We had a long conversation. He's not a town employee. He, he basically is. He can come back as a town employee. When he went, when he knocked his hours off, he was actually a town employee at the time. Well, yeah, he so, used to be a town employee. I think that has to be posted. Uh, if it's, uh, if, look, he, he, is he not currently employed right now by the town? I have to talk to Eric about that. So. Okay, because if he's not employed he's by the town, it has to be posted. Mm -hmm. You just can't no, give it to anybody. Yeah. 
that I'm, I'm just talking the other day as far as him willing to do it on an on-call basis and not... He would be perfect want, for it. Yes, he would be. But it has to go to the proper... That's from... Okay. So, um, just backing up, it sounds like the, the, the outstanding topic from last meeting was whether or not we had a, a line item. Yeah, there's a line item. There, right? We haven't expended it. And what is that? The line item is $22,000. You know, budget for this budget. So. And I wanted to clarify. So we were using two. Arlene and I were using per diem. You were using part time go. Um, per diem being as needed. So for example, when we have an attendant out, or one of the full time attendants out, or you know, I don't know. I was wondering about the language as far as oh. you know, as far as budget and stuff. I don't think you know, per diem is part of the budget stuff. So. I'll talk to Eric about that too. Well, can, sure. can I just finish my thought? Well, <laughs> I just yeah, like, <laughs> I have to finish no. my. I can't interrupt her. I'm, I've got three things here. I'm waiting to ask her. So don't okay, so we can. Say, well, you go ahead. I'll do next. I just have to clarify a few of these things too. So. Well, I guess I wanted to make sure we clarify because this is important when we're even talking about posting a job if we have mm -hmm. to. Is when you say a part-time employee, you're saying you are going to be guaranteed 20 hours a week. When you say per diem, you're saying you're, you're as going needed. to be used as needed, which may be an hour a week or it may be not at all all year. It, may, it, yeah. it varies. I'll suppose the posting that they did the last time so, they had it somewhere. So. so I think we still need to make sure we're... We've never done per diem. It's so, been, it was been part-time. It was a part time. Employee. We set hours? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've never done a per diem person. So this is. As long as I've been here, anyway. Right. Yeah. We would only need this person. I guess I'd want to look at the job description. Does it say per diem or part time, or can we add? If it says, says part time, can we add per diem? Because I. Because we only need the person when we need them, we yeah. don't need them all the time. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't see how we can justify. Adding another person up there. No. Without adding another person. That person would be used for coverage, though. But if you are adding a person to part time, you would have to give them standard hours each week, right. is what we're saying. And there isn't a need for that. There's a need for someone's going to be out, we yeah. need coverage let that me, day. That's let me, for DM. Let me clarify the person himself. I'm going to talk to the town account. Right. First. But you also need to talk to them about the job description. It doesn't say part time. Yeah. I'll pull that from the last um, thing. I and to. can we modify it to yeah. say part time or This has just been need. brought to my attention. He's willing to do it. So. Yeah. We don't need somebody 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. we, need we might not even cover when other people are around. Yeah. That's we might not even need somebody one hour a week, many weeks. Right. You know? He understands that. That's why I you know, would like but to. We need to make sure the language is clear and the job description yeah. doesn't say part time because that's not what we need. Okay. Yeah. I, I that job has been posted, what, 10 years, 8 years? How long has it been? I mean, it might be that we just need a new job description. And well, John job. Gray did it. He, it, was, Gray. it was, did it it was Gray. Chris, oh, Keith, oh, cool. and then John Gray. Yeah. And then when Keith passed away, John Gray stepped into Keith's position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a part-time position, not a per diem. Yeah. I don't but know why. John it worked, worked but I don't, every Saturday. Yes. He worked the weekends. Yes, he worked the weekends. Yeah. Worked. But I don't know why the job description couldn't be altered yeah, for say. per diem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever. You know, yeah, what we need. I agree. Yep. Okay. What else do you have, Gail? Uh, that's really about it. I mean, we had uh, a few instances. I mean, uh, one thing good for town of Hanson, the Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street has been torn apart. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding that, so that's good. been quite, quite the deal. Went by the train track. Completely. You can tell I don't eat there. Completely dismantled. I mean, um, I did not see that. Uh, that's that's quite plus for Hanson. Uh, Shaw Septic System finally done. There's grass growing. Mm -hmm. The grading's finally done after all this time and. You know, the water, the rainwater is flowing off at the proper way, so awesome. hopefully things are done. So I think that's pretty much it. And the uh, system's busy. A lot of septic systems are happening, so we're pretty busy there. So, but, uh, Food inspections? Food inspections, just a couple. I've got, uh, I still got to finish uh, Speedway because they're not, it's not disassembled yet. 
the food products that feed with what's out of there hasn't been completed yet, and that's when I'll go back to them. So, uh, been at the uh, well, it wasn't actual food inspection. I've been to across the street here, Dunkin' Donuts, several times. They've had issues. They've had a crew in the, in the box week. They closed at one o'clock. They had to fix the flooring in there and uh, do a deep clean. And that's a report, but uh, you know. And, have a couple of other issues going on as far as food product goes, uh, but you know that'll come up later on. So, but uh, we're still pretty busy. A lot of things happening. So, we'll see. Is that? Are you, I was wondering, are you done for it? Oh, any questions? Those are the, the hot things that are happening, really. So. Okay. But, uh, and I know that the water reason, testing yeah. has started. Uh, like, for the camp. Yeah, that started two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So the water testing has started, so we're good there. And um, I've talked to the beach director. We've got a lot of fishing line coming across the pond. Why, I don't know. And that's my pet feed. Fishing line is absolutely dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm there. But, uh, like I check every morning to myself just to check for fishing line. I know Roger checks in the afternoon it, where it's coming from, where there's people I guess people may be fishing off the dock, which they stopped that from happening. So, but, yeah. but we got we got like four or five sets going on right now. Hampton, uh, the issue of Depot Village. So you had that stuff, but that's just ongoing. that'll be ongoing. Thing. That's ongoing forever. It sounds like. So. Okay. Arlene, you have some questions. Go ahead. I too have questions, and they're kind of all over the place. Um, this. First of all, one of them is a bill for Old Colony Planning Council, and it mm -hmm. looks like we have the same invoice twice. No. So what he does is he does the way he does it. So he should do a letter and an invoice, but yes. he does the letter and the invoice, but they look very similar. So it's one invoice for one property. Okay, that's his invoice. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's yep, kind of yep, like yep. a letter, but I include yeah. both of them just so yeah, it not it super clear, exactly. but yeah, so the install of one stuff that. Um, my other question was on these shirts. Who are these shirts ordered for? Me. So, do you guys get a stipend? You don't get a stipend, no. Yeah, the two, other two hundred dollars a year. All right. So we pay this, or you pay this? Board pays that. Who? Our board pays this in the budget. Okay, but so maybe it's the guys at the transfer station that actually get a they, stipend. They, they get, get a thousand dollars to year. buy their own shirts. Yeah. So that was my, my question. Mine's two hundred dollars. I don't know who this is for. Yeah, but they get a stipend. I thought it them. said somewhere. It's not a separate it. line item in the mm -hmm. budget. It's not a oh, separate line. This isn't. I didn't see it. Just to put out. I saw it somewhere. Agent shirts. How did I didn't see it. Oh. Right here. This is where I thought. The zero shirts. Yeah. Well, I saw zero. That's the description. I thought. <laughs> zero yeah. shirts for health agents. I'm like, okay. I knew I saw a health agent shirt somewhere. Mm -hmm. The other question is, yeah. you have me listed as vice chair on these minutes, and I'm not vice chair. So that was my question about whether or not I should sign those. Oh. I'll just print the um, I'll print an updated one. That's weird. Because you didn't change it. I know. All right. Hold on. That's what is that June sixth? June sixth. Right. 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 I can't figure out. Is it Main Street right now from Main Street all the way up past the transfer station of Franklin? But it was you know, that huge. You know, night is very confusing. It's from, it starts at Main and Franklin, I believe. I drove by it today. It starts at Main and Franklin and goes down Franklin Street to Tritown. Okay. To, to the Hanson line. So... That's to avoid for the next two weeks, and then it switches. So people don't realize Main and Franklin is at the curve. That's yeah. Right. Oh, I know. I know. Frank, because Franklin Street comes down and goes around into goes Bridgewater, and most people would know that. But I was like, yeah. 
I need a visual. When the police reported it, I said, I need a visual. I need to know where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> Just right. tell me. I know the general. <laughs> so, all right. are we all set? I will offer a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.